Hello and welcome. I'm Regina McCann Hess, president of Forge Wealth Management. And today we are here for our Thriving in Health and Wealth series. So thank you for joining us. I have a co-host again today, Patty Burke from Whole Health Co. LLC. And today, Patty is going to tell us about her own personal COVID experience. Uh, it's pretty crazy. And then we're also going to talk about ways to help you build your own immune system and provide you with healthy options around food and movement to strengthen your body, your health, and your spirit. So Patty, please share your experience with us because, you know, I don't think everybody, everyone personally knows someone who actually had an experience like you did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ours was early on, and I say ours because it spread through our whole household of five of us, Whoa. my husband, myself, and three kids in their 20s, uh, way back in March. Okay, right so, at the point of so, everything happening. That's when Things you were just started. starting to close down, and that's what happened was our youngest daughter was a senior at uh, BC, at Boston, at college, B BC, Boston mm -hmm. College. And um, they were directed to pack up. They were already done with their spring break. They were back on campus. Uh, it was right around March 13, 15, whatever. And they were given five days to pack up your stuff. You, we're all gonna go online for the rest of the semester. Well, the whole campus broke out in a big party, especially the seniors, right? What are you going to do with all that time? And of course they did. Let's just get all our traditions in in five days. Woo woo. Right? Well, they went at it. And, um, and good for them, really, because they missed out on the graduation. Exactly. But, exactly. Yeah. It, that, so what happened within three days of her getting home, and we were all quarantining at that point, yeah. um, and Massachusetts was, shut, was shutting down um, in mid-March, mid uh, she develops the fever. We thought it was a sinus infection. She tends to get these a few times a year. And she has a fever, and big stuffy head and, and uh, congestion, body aches. So, um, you know, she treated it with Tylenol, some decongestant. And within two days, we got word that her friend tested positive for COVID, a good friend. And that there were no tests available at that time. Yeah, a friend crazy. knew a doctor right. and was lucky enough to get in. So it was like, oh, light dawns, I'm on Marvel, <laughs> light dawns. Okay, well, by that time, daughter number two comes down with symptoms. Two days later, my husband. Two days after that, myself. Oh my gosh. And then <laughs> an oldest daughter, she, was, she was, has the toughest immune system, I think. She only had big tummy pains for one night. But, but what, what we experienced was, um, you, different types of symptoms. None of them were, 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 um, to, were unmanageable. Um, it was like managing a, a flu. Mm -hmm. uh, so we were very fortunate that way. Um, we all had a low grade temperature. Um, I had very achy hips. I was waking up in the middle of the night with back problems right outside on the outside of my lungs. It was very sore and tender. Um, and I had achy joints. And I had very foggy brain. Mm -hmm. I know, that, you know, on top of my menopause, foggy brain. <laughs> this was worse. Um, others had different symptoms. They had congestion. They had headaches. Uh, we were all able to get dressed, walk around. You know, we had a low-grade fever. Just feeling yucky for about a week. They had some chest pain, like like a, a horse sitting on their chest oh, wow. um, for about a day or two. Um, for myself on day seven, I started to feel the shortness of breath. Mm -hmm. And uh, luckily that only lasted about three, three days or so. Um, it's funny, the one common uh, symptom that we all had was the loss of say, uh, taste and smell. Okay, okay, because that's one of the telltale signs, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, that, that's, that tends to be a typical one. They still don't know why that's happening. But see, luckily, we um, didn't have any underlying conditions, you know, no diabetes, no. Uh, so it's, it's really our lifestyle diseases, which we do have control over, um, that, are, that are getting us in trouble with COVID. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. it's, it's landing people in the hospital. Now, granted, if you're a cancer patient or you have major lung and heart disease, yeah, that's a, a big problem if you catch COVID. Um, but really, um, you know, if we keep our weight down, if we keep our diabetes controlled, and that's what we're going to talk about, um, mm -hmm. and, and keep our immune system up, um, then we won't be landing in the hospital. Right. And your and, family was able to manage your symptoms at home. Nobody had to be admitted to the hospital. And you guys were all under one roof. Exactly. Oh my gosh, going through it together. We well, were. Talk about family togetherness. I'll tell exactly. You. Yeah. And that's how quickly, you know, we were trying to stay distant. Yeah. But see, that's how, that's how you hear of these families, that it spreads, you know, within their household, right. within you know, our shopping, our restaurants, going to bars. Um, it's just, it's, it's highly contagious. There's just no way around it. Wow. And, and it was in the beginning when, when, when they had just announced like, hey, this is really a thing, you know, everybody needs to go home and stay home. So it wasn't like, it wasn't like you really had a chance to get out of its way. It just came barreling right to you. Exactly. Yeah, oh. exactly. Oh we took gosh. the punches. Oh and uh, and went with it and and spoke to our doctors over the phone. They couldn't order up tests at that time. That the, the okay. tests yeah, were only right. available for the medical staff. Right. Um, but they did keep an eye on. It. They were especially afraid of it going into um, a pneumonia. Yeah. So that that's the key thing. Yeah. That that we have to pay attention no matter how healthy you are, no matter how well you're dealing at home with the symptoms. It is important to keep an eye that, that it doesn't go into a pneumonia right, and stay in touch with your doctor. There's no question about it. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 um, and usually it, you can self-treat with decongestant and Tylenol. They, they recommend no Advil or Motrin. Oh, okay. Do not yeah. turn to the ibuprofen. Hmm. Um, it, it could actually worsen the effects of COVID. So that's a huge tip. Did that not know that. To our audience, the Tylenol. Wow. Um, so we want to keep that on hand, you guys, your extra strength Tylenol. That, that yeah. saved me. Always the in the cabinet. Day. Always. Mm -hmm. We get that big bottle from Costco. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's great. Um, and it's, it's amazing, great. like, in, in the fact that your whole family had is crazy. Um, but the good thing is that you guys did not, weren't sick enough that you had to be admitted to the hospital. Yes. And that has been the case for the majority of people. Um, who have had it, have been able to take care of the symptoms at home, kind of like the flu, but, you know, you feel like crap, um, you know, whereas some people, you know, on the other extreme who had either underlying conditions, you know, those are the people who needed to be in the hospital. And like you said, once it, you know, if it gets to your lungs, you, you definitely have some problems. Um, yeah. I've heard some stories, you know, about that too. So that's a little scary. Sure. Absolutely. So you mentioned some of the some of the signs. Um, you know, we definitely mentioned the loss of taste, loss of smell. What are some of the other telltale signs that you that you know with that uh, illness? Yeah. So, um, well, just in general, right? Um, with the illness, or even with our overall health. Right. Um, yeah. If, if it, because again, we want to keep our health as strong as possible. Um, so if we're getting weight gain. Um, if you're, if you're, you know, having mood swings, uh, and again, th these are the effects of the day and age that we're living in today, right? So we're living under a lot of change, change. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of change in our society and our household and our work environment, our kids schooling. Yeah. The right? change so, has skyrocketed. It's, it's huge. Months, and as a health coach, we are working with people to help them to recognize these signals because right. they take a toll on our health absolutely on our emotional health and which is connected to our physical health absolutely right so the telltale signs we want to start paying attention to what's happening to me right i know i'm, I'm part of this big family or i'm part of a company or i'm part of a school you know and i have that identity but how about paying attention to me right so we want to we want to start paying attention so telltale signs of you know if you're not up up to snuff or you know, weight gain, mood swings, we're having fatigue, um, lack of motivation, um, we're getting foggy brain, you know, we just can't think straight, or, or we have ADD symptoms, you know, we're jumping from one thing to the next. Um, if you're getting body aches, body stiffness, um, you know, and when that happens, 
our, um, you know, let's talk about the happy hormones versus the stress hormones. So we, we get brain effects and the brain effects can go either way. Right. Um, we're going to try to be balancing those out, right? The happy and the sad. So when we have an overload of sad and stress hormone, um, we're going to turn to things like food binging, more sweets, um, addictions are on the rise, you know, addic addictive behavior with smoking or drinking um, or whatever the addiction might be, mm -hmm. gambling, gaming. Um, you know, we want to be aware of that. Um, so we'll turn to laziness, you know, not exercising as much and a more sedentary lifestyle. So that creates a cycle. Yeah. And, and then yeah. we all become more susceptible, um, to the risks of COVID. And, and, and again, this is just simply our human condition. We need to learn to accept it. Yes, we are in change. Yes. We're in overload with homeschooling our kids. Yes. You know, all these things are happening. So we do have to just accept it, recognize that it's there, mm -hmm. ride the wave, and 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 let let it go. You know, let let some some things go. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. We don't want to let go of our health. No, that's the key thing. No, because it's too hard to get it back. Exactly. Yeah, right. you got to work very very hard to get it back. You're right. So what do you what do you suggest? Yes. What do you do to suggest for us? Um, you know, to take back, back that control. Yeah. So we want to boost our physical health, right? And we want to boost our, our mental health. So in order to, let's concentrate on the physical health during this, this discussion. Um, how do we do that? Well, we do it by boosting our immune system. Mm -hmm. We do it through food mm -hmm. and we do it through physical activity and movement. Okay. Okay. And then why boost the immune system and physical health? Well, a few reasons. You know, we, as we spoke about, we want to um, uh, avoid uh, being at risk of these viruses and diseases and, and, and their severe symptoms that come along. Um, and when we do get sick, you know, it allows us to bounce back quicker, you know, with the le less severe symptoms. We want to live longer, right? We want to enjoy more of the things that we love doing traveling, you know, when, when we can, uh, or taking day trips or getting out in the yard with our grandkids. Mm -hmm. Um, right. We want to get on bike rides, be able to go for walks. Um, so these are all important things, you know, in our life, we want to socialize. Um, we want to be more self-aware and, um, and more productive at work. Um, and not just during the epidemic, but you know, during all times of our life. So the, these are important ways and we want to avoid, um, you know, illness and ensure that we are just feeling good and thriving. That's, that's great advice. So how can you give us some secrets for immune boosters? Yes. So this is information that I've gathered. I have seven um, secrets for boosting our immune system. And uh, this is information I've gathered through my health training, coaching, and through research um, like nationally known, you know, integrative medicine doctors. So mm -hmm. I'll list them really quickly here, the top seven and just touch on each. Um, so first one is to reduce stress, worry, and anxiety. Uh, number two, take care of your gut health. Super important. Mm -hmm. Number three, we need sunshine. We need sun. Yes. I love the sunshine. Need that. Need that. Um, fourth is movement. Our bodies. We're biologically built for movement. Uh, fifth one, uh, healthy food and hydration. Sixth one is sleep, getting a good quality and quantity of sleep. And seventh one is not smoking. Mm -hmm. So these are seven, they might sound simple, but there, there's a lot involved. And yeah. again, it takes habit change and practice. Um, so I'll just touch real quick on each one, okay? Yeah, it's great. So stress and worry and anxiety, you know, this can be a loop. And I, and, and I mentioned this before, you know, it starts in our brain, the way we take in information, we take in overwhelm, it's going to increase our stress hormone reaction, which is naturally there. Okay. It's, it's there to help us. It's back in the caveman day. Mm -hmm. Think of, of 
you know, when we were in danger, when we are in danger, running from a thief, uh, when we were running from the, the, um, the big dinosaurs back then, um, there was something called adrenaline and cortisol that would get triggered in our bodies and give us the energy and the clarity to um, increase our muscle strength and give us quickness to run from that animal and outsmart that, that danger. That's all great. But now these days when we have little dangers coming up, we're either stuck in traffic or we're stressed with trying to do 10 things, you know, in a five minute period, mm -hmm. or we have a deadline at work, that cortisol is going to get zooming through our body. And, and that creates hunger, creates moods, um, it creates um, organ dysfunction. So we want to be able to control those stress responses, we call them. Okay. Okay, and be more aware. One trick when you're in the moment is to take five deep breaths. Simple, simple, simple. Getting oxygen low into your body helps to regulate our nervous system. Okay, so, so we want to keep in general our stress and anxiety down. Try to come up with a system. Try to work with a, with a coach. Um, you know, we'll try to work with, with um, your spouse and in, in trying to come up with a system for yourself, um, journaling, meditating, whatever it is, mm -hmm. okay, to help reduce your overall uh, stress and busy schedule. Number two, okay, taking care of our gut health. This is a, a subject that not many people talk about, and it's huge. Yeah, I bet. Guess what? Guess what? I have a quiz question for you. Uh oh, oh gosh. What, 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 all right, I'm ready. What percentage um, of our immune system is held in our gut? Oof. What do you think? Um, 40%? Good guess. Higher. Yeah. Higher? So, oh, yeah. Wow. Up to 90%. What? Of our system is held in, in our your gut. gut. That's oh, crazy. yes. Wow. This is a whole nother topic. Oh, that yes, you and it I is. Chat about because it regulates everything, everything in our bodies. It regulates our hormone balance. It regu regulates our organ health. Huh. It regulates our nutrient absorption. Um, our blood flow and our, our immune system, wow. you know, the way our body can fight diseases, can fight, you know, anything that could be brewing, um, it all starts in our gut. Wow. I had yeah. no idea. Yeah. Not a lot of people do. And I battled, battled tummy aches and digestive issues for a lot of my life. And I finally got it under control when I worked with some holistic, uh, integrative medicine doctors and, um, and with movement and healthy eating and the right um, supplementation. Um, I'm all better. Yeah. <laughs> I feel great. Yeah. So, so would, would one of those supplements be like a probiotic yeah. to help take care of those things in your yeah. gut? Well, we, we need the right uh, bacteria balance okay. in our gut. That's one of the basics. We need healthy bacteria and, um, and then there's going to be unhealthy bacteria that comes right. with seafood and allergens and things like that. So we want to increase our healthy bacteria. Okay. Simple way to do it is healthy food mm -hmm. um, it, that has lots of fiber. And um, I supplement with a probiotic okay. once a day. Mm -hmm. um, shoot for a 30 billion um, bacteria count. It's right mm -hmm. on the label. You can buy them in CVS. Um, you want a good quality one, go to a nice health food store. Also, as we age, our digestive enzymes um, start reducing. So we have okay. these important enzymes in our tummy. Um, there, is, there are products out there, just easy supplement. Again, I take one or two a day. They're called digestive enzymes, oh, okay. separate from a probiotic. Uh, okay, so, that's separate. That's separate from the probiotic. It's a separate supplement. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Um, yep. So... Uh, so again, you want to find a, a healthy um, uh, natural food health store, like a Whole Foods, mm -hmm. and talk to the professionals there, and they'll guide you um, okay. on 
to these extra supplements. Um, another tip, we want to avoid red meat. We want to avoid dairy, sugar, wheat, and alcohol. Eh, sorry to say. <laughs> Not so good for our health. And again, spicy foods um, can aggravate. Right. But right. Um, I, if we I, keep I, some of these. Go ahead. Do you I have get the sugar like, because now you're seeing more and more studies about how bad sugar is for you and how it is in everything we eat. That's another chat, yeah. that chat we're going to have. Oh, yeah. Uh, there are hidden. I give a whole presentation, um, a, a wellness talk on um, how to cut your sugar cravings mm. and how it's hidden in a lot of our food. There are t over 20, 30 names for different kinds of sugars, fructose and this and that that are all hidden in our products. So we have to become good label readers mm -hmm. and, and just, just cut out you know, a lot of that. Um, okay, so um, number three, sunshine. Getting sunshine on, a, on our face, through our skin. Our, our skin is, is um, the largest organ on our body. True. Okay, so, so um, getting sunshine, it increases our vitamin D and, and then our happy hormones. Uh, vitamin D supplement is really good to take because if we're not outside, if we're in the office a lot, mm -hmm. um, I take a supplement every day. Mm -hmm doesn't hurt. Um, and uh, it, it increases our serotonin, our happy hormones. Right. And I, I think I even mentioned in one, one of our other calls yeah. or videos that how much of a difference just going out for a bike ride in the morning and, mm -hmm. and having that sunshine or a walk, having that yeah. being in the sunshine just yeah. totally changes my viewpoint on the day. And it so does. I can see how powerful it is. Yeah, totally. And vitamin D mm -hmm. actually boosts your respiratory health oh, as well. So some right. science is coming out on that as well. Vitamin D from the sun. That's right. There you go. Number four is movement. Movement. Simple, simple. We all know this. You know, trying to get basic movement or, or, um, or raise the, the heart rate if we want to keep a healthy heart and burn mm -hmm. calories. Mm -hmm. Trying to get at least 20 minutes of elevated heart rate a day. Right. Okay at a minimum uh, a day. Some people will do an hour a day workout. Some, some people will skip a day. That's okay. But, um, you know, at least try to even get a 15 minute walk in if right. you can't get a, 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 an elevated, you know, like a, a jog or aerobics or something. Mm -hmm. And are there types of movements that you suggest like that would help a little bit more than others? Absolutely. Yeah. And pick things that you like to do. Okay. Okay. So it should be pleasurable and, um, and, and enjoy and something you enjoy. So it can be walking, you know, grab a friend, go out for those walks, go for a bike ride. I hop on the bike trail here. I try to do it. Oh, quite a few times a week, clears the head, gets the body yeah. going up uh, jogging, uh, tennis, yoga, basketball, pickup game, um, swimming. Okay. You know, any kind of movement. Okay. Uh, pickleball, it's very popular here. It, I spend time at Cape Cod, it's popular in Florida. Um, you know, any racket sports, work, you know, any of that, okay. any kind of movement, cartwheels in the yard, <laughs> whatever you can do um, is, you is, is healthy. Okay. Okay, number five, food and hydration. Of course, uh, we've talked a lot about this in, in our series. Um, healthy, nutritious, food that's nutrient dense we want we want to look at food as fuel for our body not just something that tastes good right. and, and 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 increases our happy hormones then we'd be eating sweets all day and really getting our body sick right and, right and basically creating a different relationship with food than most of us have exactly exactly so we want to st stick with the, the healthy basics of our macronutrients Okay. And that is our proteins, our carbohydrates, and healthy fats. Oh, good. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and cut um, down on our bread and pastry. Yeah, and that's um, the bread yeah. is the challenge, I think, for a lot of people. The pastries, you know, yeah. I can, you know, every once in a while, that's great, I'll have one, but I can, I can be okay without them. But the bread is, that's tough. Yeah. That's Bread's tough. a tough one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So for bread, 
you know, you want to keep it. What I do is, is I'll, I'll have um, an open top sandwich mm -hmm. and I'll put like a little piece of lettuce or something to cover the top part. Oh yeah. 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 So yeah, you that's can a good, cut your that's bread a good, intake yeah. and of course stay away from just white bread. Yeah. Try to go with your whole grain. Yeah. We made that, that tr transition a couple of years ago. That's very smart. You know, that way you're staying full longer and you're getting the benefits of grain. It helps your digestive system. Um, and uh, so, yeah, when we have too much sugar or too many simple carbs, um, it can increase our chronic inflammation. You were saying sugar, sugar, sugar is bad. Yes, it adds weight, but it also, science is telling us it increases uh, our prospects of developing these lifestyle diseases wow. like diabetes, wow. like chronic inflammation, you know, around our organs, our heart disease, our stroke risk. Um, it's, it can all be related back to sugar mm. and the breakdown of breads and flour. Um, so that, that's the problem with that. So yeah, we can basically agree that sugar just is not good for you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so, all right, I will admit, I am a sugar addict um, and I need my sweets. So how do I get a sweet fix yeah. by, and avoid sugar? Good question. Got a couple tips on that. Okay. Um, one thing that's worked for me is uh, because I like to have that sweeter taste hanging in my mouth rather than a salty one after a meal. Mm -hmm. um, I go for a piece of, little piece of dark chocolate. Okay. And Dove, can I just recommend, and, and this is, they didn't tell me to say this, but Dove chocolate is my favorite. The dark mm -hmm. chocolate, it's just the right combination of creaminess and it comes in these little one inch squares. Mm -hmm. And you can just have one or two and that's it. That will relieve, you know, after time goes by, it takes about two weeks for us to cut our sugar cravings. Oh, that's it? Two weeks? Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then you'll notice that you won't really be craving that morning muffin mm -hmm. or a big piece of cake or a big chocolate chip cookie. Uh, your mm -hmm. cravings will go down. And what has helped me are these, this little piece of dark chocolate. Um, and, I, and I'll have one um, it'll, and it may be a couple times a day or once a day or whatever. And um, another way um, to cut down on your sugar is to, and what I use is the plant-based um, sugar, which is... Um, stevia? Uh, is that stevia? Stevia, yes. Stevia. Okay. The stevia plant. Okay. And, and we call it Truvia. You know, there's one in the supermarket. There's a package of it called Truvia. Okay. It's a, from the stevia plant. Okay. Um, and you only need a little bit. Uh, it's zero calories and it's healthy. We really okay. want to avoid the fake sugars, the, the Splenda and the, um, the blue pack, the pink backs. I don't even know what they're called anymore. Uh, sweet and lows. Yeah. Those are man-made chemicals. Yeah. And when your body takes in a man-made chemical, it doesn't know how to process it. Okay. And guess what? It can turn to fat, believe it or not. So if you're drinking a lot of diet soda, it's not doing your metabolism any good. Yeah. Your yeah, body is up confused. three years ago. Three good years for ago, you. I gave up my diet coke. Woo woo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good for you. It was hard. Yeah. It was hard. Yeah. It's hard. You're better off actually, if you want a little bit of a, of a caffeine and a little sweet is, um, is a little touch of black coffee mm -hmm. uh, with maybe some almond milk and a little bit of Truvia. Huh. And that way, if you're looking for a little bit of coffee, I don't do caffeine very mm -hmm. well. It makes me shaky, not recommending caffeine, but if some people like the Diet Coke for the caffeine boost, you might as well do just a little black coffee with a little uh, Truvia in there. And another sweetener that I use in my plain yogurt is a dash of maple syrup. Not the fake Aunt Jemima. Oh, the stuff from Vermont. Vermont maple syrup. I'm a UVMer. I went to uh, UVM up in Burlington, oh, okay. my alma mater. Love, I got hooked on the Vermont maple syrup. But any kind of um, maple syrup that is the real stuff, really great little sweetener. I put it in my quinoa, you know, when I'm, when I'm making a little quinoa dish or, or whatever you want to sweeten up, you can lose, use a little bit of maple syrup. Perfect. Great hydration. You know, we want to just try to get our eight ounces a day, multiple glasses a day.
for sleep. We want to get good quality of sleep, shoot for, it might be six hours, could be eight hours. We want to power down at night, try to have relaxing, low blue light. Um, you know, don't be having a lot of TV and commotion. Try to set up your room so it's calm. Maybe have a warm bath, do a little reading. We want to get a good quality sleep. Um, and number seven is not smoking. You know, that, mm. that's a given. It, avoid the vaping. Vaping mm. is just as bad as smoking cigarettes. Right. Um, and we don't want to damage our lungs and, um, uh, you know, and take in that, that that's extra true. toxin. Yeah, well, yeah, there's all sorts of studies on how actually vaping could be worse than smoking. Yes. Uh, and they're talking about sponge lung, like all sorts of crazy things uh, that mm -hmm. have come up as a result of vaping. And, and in much shorter time period, like with smoking, yeah. you don't see the damage for 30 or 40 years. And obviously it's too late at that point. Um, but with some of these uh, vaping situations, yeah. uh, the kids weren't vaping that long and then had major medical issues. So yeah. that's a little scary. Really? Yep, for sure. So yeah. how do we overcome the challenges? Yeah, well, just to sum up, really, yes, it, it, it's challenging, right? To, yeah. we, we gave a lot of information, challenging to pay attention to our health, and especially challenging to change our habits, mm -hmm. right? Our critter brain will kick in, and I call it the critter brain. Oh, that's a great, great term. I love it. Yep. It's, it's very animalistic. It'll kick in. The minute something feels uncomfortable to us as humans, we're going to have a resistant reaction, and that's called the critter brain. Okay. So we want to recognize when that pops up and be able to switch it around. So for instance, if we're used to grabbing that morning muffin, right, and we're trying to change, um, it's not going to feel so comfortable, but you'll see once we, we start with just one small change, and that's all we recommend, um, uh, is to start small and eventually our brain will catch up and it will start to feel more comfortable over time okay. with, with having a little bowl of oatmeal with some blueberries mm -hmm. in there and mm -hmm. a little dash of, of, of maple syrup. Mm -hmm. um, start filtering that in and then maybe, so if you have a muffin every single day, start the first week with have it three times a week rather mm -hmm. than seven times, mm -hmm. right? And then the next week it's down to one time a week. You know, so we want to ease our way into these healthier habits, the right. power down hour before bedtime, you know, with, with reading, low lights, um, a warm bath. Try it. Try it once a week. That, then start trying it two and three times a week. Eventually, it will become habit yeah. and a regular process. So, so again, um, habit change, it takes three months to change a habit. It also helps when there is a health coach. Um, someone um, providing accountability, providing um, guidelines and support. And you can start to develop your own accountability system on your own over time as you increase your self-awareness around your body and your environment around you. Yeah, it's really helpful. And I like the way you, you talk about how the habits change and you decrease, yeah. you know, instead of like cold turkey, if you find that's going to be too challenging, do the three times a week, you know, gradually wean yourself down. One of the things that I did recently um, to try and take back control of my health, um, just you know, obviously trying to eat better, um, made all sorts of excuses during COVID and that's yeah. just not flying anymore. So I told you I am a sugar addict and big time. Um, so there, I'm looking at the cabinet where the candy is. I know everybody knows where right. the candy is in my house. So what I did was I left that alone because the kids have snacks in there and whatnot but then i went out and i bought almonds and uh, pumpkin seeds and some cashews um but predominantly almonds are my snack now so i put them in a different cabinet so oh. i don't i don't have a reason this to go into that cabinet I, because i knew if right. i put them in that cabinet instead of getting the, the, eye, I'm getting the candy you're right the eyes can trigger that craving yeah absolutely just by yeah. seeing it it's yeah. not funny Yep, yep. Absolutely. Yeah, and crazy. yeah, and by the way, with your almonds, you could have a little half a banana to go with it, um, which which actually will help satiate any kind of sweet Other craving. Sweetness, yeah. Yeah. Or even a few chocolate covered almonds. Oh, 
Now, you're, right. now you're going to spoil me. <laughs> right. Right. Well, the well, other, the, the, in the past couple of weeks when I've been doing this, the, the cherries this year have been out of control. Amazing. I mean, like right. just crazy good. So when I'm feeling that like after a meal, I need a sweet, Sick. I Perfect. do two or three cherries yep. and that's it. And then I'm like, yep. oh my God, that was so good. And you, yep. and you enjoy it even more because you're yep. not having all the other crap. Exactly. <laughs> you know? oh, well, your energy is going to be boosted. You're going to see yeah. the direct effect mm -hmm. of having better energy. Yeah. But that's th those true. are great. Those are, uh, you know, great strategies. Yeah. Well, this was a great topic and I know we're going to delve into some other amazing yes. topics. I mean, every, every uh, time we yeah. come to the video screen, um, I love the topics that you bring and I'm really you know, grateful for that. Um, and Good. so again, if anybody wanted to reach out to you, how would, how would they uh, reach you? Sure. Well, through my corporate wellness company, uh, we're bringing wellness to the workplace to help mm -hmm. Uh, support the well-being of our depleted workforce, right? We want to get the right work-life balance going on yeah. for everyone who's, you know, dealing with working and trying to stay healthy. So you can find me at um, wholehealthcollc.com or at my coaching business where I uh, work with people one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, that's wholebodyfocus.com. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. Great. Um, I know that, you know, just talking through some of these topics with you has risen an awareness for me to, and it kind of motivates me to be a little bit better about my health and what I'm, you know, doing to try and get back in control of my health. So thanks for sharing all this information. And, uh, and I'm really hoping that everyone else watching is, is taking, yep. you know, even one or two good tips and using them in your daily life to improve your health and wellness and so that you can thrive in your health and wellness. Um, Perfect. Yeah. So we Great. are going to continue to meet with Patty and we're also going to meet with our friend May. Okay. And we're going to continue bringing you great topics to help you, you know, get to your goals of your health, wealth, and wellness. Um, I'm Regina McCann Hess, president of Forge Wealth Management, and you can reach me at forgewealth.com on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at Forge Wealth and LinkedIn at Regina McCann Pass. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.